everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. And this series of little episodes here, I'm doing uh, the toolbar. And in this one specifically, I'm going to be covering the ripple and roll edit tools here. And under the toolbar, that's located like right here, right underneath the arrow there. Now, if you notice that you've got a little teeny arrow in the top, bottom right hand corner of that, that basically means that this is an expandable menu and you can choose more items here. Uh, by default, this is just the ripple edit tool, which is the shortcut for uh, the letter B is the shortcut for that. If you click and hold your mouse on this, it will o open this up and expand it. And you will see the rolling edit tool, the right stretch, stretch tool and remix tool uh, under this under this little dropout menu here. And I'm not going over the right stretch tool or the remix tool. We are now covering the ripple and the roll tool. I won't use this again because all I have to do is select a letter on my keyboard, the letter B for the ripple tool and the letter N for the roll tool. So the uh, ripple tool here, if I hover this over and edit here, you'll notice uh, when you go over a clip, it just has a little uh, dash through it, basically meaning that this does nothing. But if you hover over your, your edit here, get close to the edit and you point to the left, it's, it's got a yellow arrow to the left. If you move it past the edit here, it turns into a yellow arrow to the right. That means it's going to ripple edit either the uh, out point of this clip or the in point to this clip. Now I'll show you what that does here. And if you do hit the, if you are on your arrow tool, which is V, for shortcut, if you hit the letter B, it chooses your ripple edit. And if you choose the letter N, I'm not sure why they chose those, that is going to be the roll edit, which we'll be covering here in a moment. So the ripple edit is really good for matching a sequence. If I play through this clip right here, this guy's laying down in bed and it cuts from this wider shot to the close up there as he lays down. And this is a little bit of a mismatch. I've done an assembly edit where I've dropped everything down in the timeline that I need it in the order that I need to tell the story. Uh, but right now it's got some mismatches here. so. Uh, so watch this as I played through it. Watch really close. He puts his head on the bed right there. And then he puts it down again. So we want to match that. And one way you could do that is you could do this manually. Basically, you could find a point here, maybe when he barely sets his head down on his pillow and then find that same point here, uh, right about there. And now I can basically, so I've trimmed those. That's with my arrow tool. I've trimmed those. And then you can click, you can click the blank space and hit delete and it pulls them together. Now the ripple uh, edit is kind of nice because it basically does this all in one move. So I'm going to undo that, undo, undo, and get back to where I was. And we're going to hit the letter B as in Bob for our uh, ripple edit tool here. So now I'm going to move to the edge here. And I'm going to get both of these ones. Uh, now, now what this does is the ripple edit will uh, edit a clip's in and out point without uh, changing the adjacent clip. So it'll leave this in point alone, but we'll change this out point right here. And uh, so what I can do here is that if I grab this, it does not it does something else as well. The trim tool, if you just grab this and drag it over, it just leaves this gap. What the ripple edit tool does, letter B, will uh, will trim your out point, and then you find uh, right up there in this image up in the left hand corner um, of your program window is the ending is a new ending out point of your clip as you drag this and make it either shorter or you can even drag it to the right and make it longer here. Uh, but when you do that, watch what happens if I drag it over here. Uh, notice the clip on the right, it is not changing its end point at all. So it only changes the clip that you're driving its out point or its end point without affecting the adjacent clips in or out point. So if we drag this over to the left, let go. What it does is it pulls everything else down and fills in that gap for you. You don't have to uh, manually select it and delete it. Now, if you grab this and drag it to the right, it will extend the clip. And if I let go, it pushes all my other clips down the timeline and doesn't affect this clip's end point right there. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to get it right on the point where his head touches the pillow. Because I'm going to make this, ripple tool is really good to make a matching point. So I'm going to do this to the out point, get it right where his head barely touches the pillow right there and let go. And it did the ripple at it. And now I'm going to get this clip and match it to that where his head touches the pillow. These are, this is not shot with two cameras. This is a shot with a single camera as many films are. And I'm going to drag this to the right. Notice now it's affecting the clip to the right's end point with, without affecting the clip to the left's out point. So if I drag this here right where his head barely touches the pillow, right there, we've got a matching point. And I play through this now. Let's see if it matches. Puts his head down. And that's a pretty good match there. It kind of lays down and lays down again, and, but that, that works there. So now let's say I don't want the edit to happen there. So what we're getting... Well, let's say we've got it matched, but I would rather have the edit cut a little bit before his head actually touches the pillow. But now we've got it matched. So now we can use the roll tool. I'm going to move over to my toolbar, hold this down and select the roll tool. And if you don't want to do that, you can use your shortcut. Let's go back to my arrow, which is a V. And then you can just hit the letter N for your roll tool. Just have to memorize that. So 
So now I'm going to move my uh, mouse over the middle of the edit here. And notice how it turns into this red color, but it has arrows pointing both left and right. What this does is if I grab this and move it, if I drag it to the left, it will trim the uh, the clip to the left. It'll trim its out point shorter, but notice that it's extending the clip to the right's in point. So while the ripple tool only affects one clip's in point or out point without affecting the adjacent clips, the roll edit affects both in clips and out points and compensates. If I'm shrinking this out point, it compensates by extending the other clip's in point or vice versa. If I extend this, the clip to the left's out point, it, uh, it compensates by decreasing the end point on the clip to the right. So now I can use this. So, so I've used the ripple tool to match. Now I'm going to use a roll tool to decide where I want the edit to end. So I can grab this edit here and I can start dragging it to the left. And notice how it's, it's somewhat in sync uh, because I got that matching point. He doesn't do the exact same thing each time, but he's pretty close. So the move by, uh, matches here. And let's say I want to do it right where his head barely starts going down toward the pillow. And then we'll cut into close up like right there. His fist is lifting up in the air. That's a match right there. I let go, and that's where my new edit is. Now, as we play through this, that's a good match, and I could even do the other way. It really depends on how you want to edit this. But let's also say that you uh, maybe want to do it when he grabs the blanket and pulls it up right there. So that means I would have to re-time this because his movements are, are not perfectly exact this, uh, each, each take here. So I'm going to hit the letter B for my ripple tool. I'm going to extend this to where he starts pulling the blanket. We're going to have that be the matching point. So he pulls the blanket, let go, move over here, grab this one, the same thing. Match from where he starts pulling the blanket up right there. Let go, and let's see if that's a matching point. And that is. And now we can use our roll tool, the letter N, and select this and decide maybe after he pulls up the blanket, we want to cut to like right there. Let go. Now that it's matched, you use a roll edit to change where the edit takes place. And let's see if it matches. A little bit of a mismatch. He kind of scrunches it up again, but that's not bad there. But we could actually go even a little further where he kind of settles down, like right there, since we kind of matched the movement and the timing. And that worked really well there. So it just really depends on where you want the edit. I think I liked it better when he was putting his head down. Uh, anyway, and one other thing here, you do not have to use this toolbar to access those tools. If you're on your selection tool here, and you want to, to access your your ripple and your roll. If you move your mouse over, the, right now this is trim, which is typical for your selection tool. If you trim it, it leaves that gap. But what you can do is, this is really cool, you can hold down Command while hovering over, and it turns that roll, it turns that trim tool automatically into a ripple tool without having to choose it from the toolbar. So now I can hold down Command, or this would be Control on a PC, grab this and drag it over, and it does the ripple right there. And same thing if I move over here, if I move over to this clip here, Hold down command. Notice it's turning from red to yellow. And now it is my uh, ripple tool rather than my trim tool, which ripple deletes. So once again, if you get a, if you get a perfect match on this, head laying down, hold down command, get right where his head lays down, right there. And now I've got a match there. And watch this. Now uh, I'm on my regular selection or trim tool here. But if you once again hold down command, if you get it close to this line here, that's a ripple. That's a ripple, but in the middle is your roll edit. So while I'm holding down Command or Control, I can drag this down and decide where I want the edit to happen. Get him up a little higher and say, I want the edit to happen right where his fist is starting to lift up right there. Let go, and I just perform my roll edit. Now I can play through the clip. And we've got a match. So that's what the ripple and roll tool do. Is it is used very commonly by professional editors in pretty much any uh, professional editing software that's available the ripple and roll tools are available. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching ChinFed. I'm going to continue going over the toolbar and Premiere in the next several episodes. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them. Thank you.